Thanks with another great time. We shall remain standing, please. The anthems, please. assignment. In my editing class, to work on a story that talked about the Purple Heart, a prestigious medal awarded to war heroes. Everyone else knew what that was, except me. When one of my professors saw my work, he spoke piercing words that really stuck to me. Sylvia, you're from Uganda, right? You don't even know what the Purple Heart is. How do you expect to make it here in journalism? Look, you need to know about America. That is going to be your primary audience. You Africans, you do things very differently. Listen to your accent. You even speak differently. I suggest you consider another major. You really have no business in journalism. I don't think he was being mean or racist. He simply spoke from his narrow experience, notwithstanding his criticism reinforced a negative voice that I had been fighting. I had this vivid memory of me reading the news to my parental great grandma Judge Asara. And mimic Eva Impanji, Uganda's then top female news anchor, in my version of the evening news. Prior to my enrollment at NYU, I had taken voice classes at a local radio station. Despite my mom's objections, the instructors were dismiss mis dismissive of my prospect in the news business because of my different or thick accent. They said people would not understand me because I didn't sound American. The only reason they didn't kick me out is because I was paying them. Right, over, right after that experience, I did something completely different. I decided to look for a job reading news at a local radio station. MBS Radio. I was eager to prove my professors wrong. They hired me. I'd get up early in the morning to read the 6 o'clock news. Even then, I was consciously criticized for not pronouncing the words correctly, besides my accent. I said in English style English, which is not always the same as American English. That was before major broadcasters like CNN recruited reporters with different accents. Shortly thereafter, I heard about an English-based gospel music group from Uganda Limit X. When I heard their music, I was blown away. Can Ugandans really sing like this? I wondered. They sounded like boys 11 men. The top R in B group and the time. They blow away any other African group that I had heard in America or anywhere else. I had to find them and interview them for our station. I thought my audience would like, love it. I spoke to my program director, who immediately agreed. I was excited. We called Limit X and aired their story on our show. This is when I met Dennis, the group leader. At the time, little did we both know that 27 years later, we would help me write a pub and publish this book, Small ecosphere, right? Gradually, I started to concede. Maybe they were right. Maybe my accent was getting in the way of hitting the pinnacle of achievement in this industry. Maybe it was time to shift to something else. I decided to make a shift. Nonetheless, oh, and she can be fun too. 
A few years ago, I managed to trick her driving a roller coaster with me in Dubai. I will never forget the look on her face when she got down to the end of the ride. Never again, she vowed. She's determined to make a lady out of me. I can always hear her in my head. Sit up straight. Be careful of who you hang out with. Don't say that. Don't do that. I couldn't have become the woman I am destined to be without her firm but gentle hand. Typically, if you're not a doctor, lawyer, accountant, or even architect in Africa, you're pretty much stuck. Thankfully, I have a mother who has been incredibly supportive. As a result, I have found my lane in the creative arts. I'm also a swimmer. Both she and dad have supported me and in fact pushed me to excel. Consequently, I have risen to win in the nationals to represent Uganda in a global stage. In a way, I still wish this for other families. I would like for us as a nation to begin to value the creative arts and encourage our kids to pursue their passions, even when they're outside of the mainstream. I'm really excited about where we're going as a nation. I always say this to my fellow young people, go explore, be creative, travel and do your dream, but do not forget your culture. Do not forget your roots. Remember, your rich traditional history. My mom has modeled this for me, modern as she is definitely. She is still a cultural icon for her people. She still upholds our ancient guiding traditions which have served as a beacon of light for generations. She will always be remembered as a champion for the less privileged, particularly the children. I can only imagine the future impact on these kids 10, 15 years from now. Uganda to officially launch her book. Our ushers will now re unveil the dummy book, and there it is. Before the Nabagerka signs, I'm going to take this opportunity to kindly ask the ushers to kindly stand on the other side, and the Nabagerka will be left in that position. At this juncture, the Nabagerka will sign on the book. I'm gonna make you my baby. 